Hiya. Hiya. Hello. Hello. And welcome to another Van Chat Tuesday. Van Chat Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, but before we get on with Van Chat Tuesday, I just want to put a, a line under Diesel Pump Gate <laughs> because um, I only ever put a video out because people said, oh, if you're doing a diesel heater install in your motorhome, uh, could you do a video about it? And then I kind of explain how to try a quiet pump. And obviously that's just exploded in a whole world war with some idiot. So um, we've not received an apology. I think most of the comments in our video show that this person behaves that way anyway. So I'm not expecting an apology. Um, but I do want to say thank you for everyone who went on Facebook and reported him for inciting hatred. Yes. That was quite a nice thing to, because we received information from YouTube to say that had been done. Um, and thank you for all the lovely people that uh, donated some money for us to cover the cost of the pump that we can't get a refund for. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so really thank you nice. very much. It's nice to know that we've got people in our yeah. corner. It's always lovely. Some topics for this week. Yeah. And these are based, obviously, on uh, questions that you've been asking us over the last few months and everything. So we thought we'd try and lift the spirits of everyone that's thinking about going full-time in van life. Because right now there is changes being made and all this kind of stuff and people maybe feel a bit worried about the future yes so we thought and the, and the future future yes the fu future 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 yeah not not just the not future. just the future but the yeah. future future yeah. yeah of van life yeah anyway should we get on with the topics yeah let's go on with the topics the future future <laughs> ones <laughs> so the first thing we, oh thank you very much so the first thing we're going to talk about is something that a lot of people keep asking about. Yes. Um, and that is, what are we going to do with vans when diesel vehicles um, aren't sold anymore? Or how much is our van going to be worth if there's no way to sell it um, in 2030 when all vehicles have got to be electric and stuff like that? And I think there's a couple of points on that to, to look at first. And the first one is that if the government still sticks to 2030 as no... Um, diesel vehicles are going to be sold um, or only electric vehicles are going to be sold they are private electric vehicles so uh, it doesn't get covered by vans commercial vehicles which is what um, camper vans and motorhomes are based on so that might be changed sometime in the future but for now I don't see a problem with that um, the second part of that is people have said oh your, your van will be worth nothing won't it it's like what do you expect it could be worth because we'll all be having electric vehicles soon <sighs> as the fact that electric cars are going to be sold and not vans, then I would think that the value of normal diesel powered vans isn't really going to be altered for the next 20 years, maybe or something like that. And it's like when, uh, when cars went from being um, leaded to unleaded mm. fuel, they didn't lose any value, no. didn't they? You know, it just yet to, it was a bit of a pain and now they've collected items, mm. but you know, it's not, um, it's a change. It's not, um, something that you can't overcome yeah and don't forget there's always an opportunity there's loads of classic cars at the moment that are being converted to electric so mm. there could be an opportunity to put a washing machine motor some tesla batteries in the floor of your van and off you go instead of instead of having underslung lpg tanks and water tanks you can have underslung tesla batteries yeah and, and the thing is technology is moving so yeah. fast and people are going to want to try their very best to make the most out of all the vehicles that are around at the minute so, yeah, yeah. And speaking of tesla batteries they did an update recently because they can do updates remotely and everything um that got an extra something like 50 amps out of the batteries which is mega just for like, a software upgrade yeah well, that's, it's unbelievable isn't yeah it? so that's pretty cool um but there are obviously uh, electric vans out there right now. Fiat do an electric Fiat Giacato, which has a ridiculous range of something like um, 80 kilometres or something like that. Um, and it doesn't carry much weight. So if you imagine camper van motorhome, you're going to be carrying the full maximum three and a half tonnes all the time. So I'd imagine when you do that, factor in that the vehicle's obviously that much heavier anyway, so you're still going to be limited to three and a half tonne then you're going to have less inside your van because you can't kit it out as much mm. and you're not going to go anywhere near 80 kilometers you're probably going to be doing half of that maybe less so i don't think it's feasible right now to think that you would get an electric vehicle it's good as a as starter a thing they've done it at least they're thinking about it so it's a good yeah. thing but i think right now it's not going to be uh, the technology is not there to make it fully workable I as think, a delivery van yeah <laughs> i think there's um I think there's a guy from Wales, I forget the channel name now, but it's a Nissan NV200, the um, full electric vehicle. And I think he travelled around Europe. He converted it into a very basic camper and travelled around Europe. And I think on average he was doing 50 miles a day. And he obviously have to find somewhere to charge it during that time as well. 
So, yeah, I don't think they're going to work that well. There's another one in America that are travelling around in, like, an old post van. Mm. And they've got, like, Do mega... You know, massive me- solar yeah, array. Yeah, megawatts of solar on the roof. And they get about 50 miles a day for every full day of sun that they're able to charge. So, yeah. I wouldn't worry too much just yet about electric commercial vehicles. Don't get confused with electric cars. Electric commercial vehicles are probably going to be, uh, you know, at least another couple, three decades off yet. Plus, just because they're not making diesel vehicles anymore doesn't mean you can't still drive the ones that are around now. Yep, or sell them secondhand or anything like that. Yep. So, yeah. So there's still going to be a market for them, I think, and there's still going to be something. It's like the people that want to buy the older vans because they don't like all these ECU jubbins and stuff like that. You know, they still can go out and buy them, and yeah, they are getting rarer, which actually bumps the prices yeah. up. So you never know what's going to happen. So, yeah, watch this space, but don't worry at all. It is just the electric vehicle drive the government's doing is a uh, little pun then. Yeah, a little drive. drive. Oh. Um, it's just based on passenger vehicles. So, cars that you and I might buy when we've got a house. Hmm. You can probably buy them now, but we won't. Yes, there's no way to charge them. We have no house, yes. Mandy wouldn't let me use the batteries to charge the, the car because no. she'd have coffee power. I know, unless I could put my coffee pi- coffee machine in the car. What, as you're driving? Yeah. That sounds good. Oh, dear. Um, anyway, the next one, topic-wise, is kind of related to that. Um, and it is the number of sort of city centres that are starting to include low-emission dr- zones or charges for vehicles that aren't low-emission vehicles. Which is basically... Um, a lot of them specify, don't they, that it's Euro 5 or above yes. that are free and... Or that are allowed to enter. Are allowed some of them to enter, well. yes, yeah. some of them aren't even allowed in. Yeah. Um, and all we'd say to that one is, obviously we've just done 10,000 miles in the last year and we didn't come across anywhere like that. For our own probable reasons is we don't go we don't anywhere go into near. Cities. Yeah. No. On the couple of occasions we did, uh, say like um, Seville mm. or Sibi, Mm -hmm. Uh, we parked way outside and then walked in yep could have got a bus or a tram or whatever and when we we went when we went to hampton court palace or went to visit there we stayed on a club site that was outside of the zones in london and we rode in on our bikes yeah because on our electric bikes our electric bikes (laughs) 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 but yeah so these these things to do and for the most places um, we went to cambridge and they have a park and ride at cambridge that allows overnight staying for vehicles yeah it's even got um water and a toilet empty and stuff like that so it's you know you go to the park and ride you park there if you want to go into the cities and then you get the bus in so it's even better because you're not you're not driving around but you've got somewhere safe and secure to leave your van and most places speaking of the park and ride most of them allow you to take a dog on the bus as well yes so you can park your van there go into the city center and enjoy it come back stay there if they allow it or go find another park up or not i'd say go find a pub yeah yeah I yeah that because that's, that's going to be the way we're going you find a pub and uh and then going from there just have to say if you, if you are in spain and you are trying to stay out of the cities because they do have the zones in yes. the, the uh, emission France zones in there as well so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but in spain if you are taking your dog you need to put a muzzle on it if you're yes. in public transport yes so um, that's the only thing we bought yeah. a soft one of those soft ones from a pound shop in in spain don't yep. like the idea of it but if it's just while he's on yeah all it's got to be is something that loosely goes around his face so he can't bite anyone yeah but yeah Um, and speaking of pub stops and park ups overnight and stuff like that leads right into our next one do you like the way these have been segmented so that each one segues into the next one anyone would think it had been planned that way yeah (sighs) to think of it (laughs) a planned video anyway speaking of overnight parking and this is probably the biggest one where people are quite worried now about the future of van life especially if you know, you've sold your house or you've rented it out and you bought a van and you're thinking, right, I'm going to travel around and all that kind of stuff. And you're seeing on news and groups, Facebook groups and stuff like that about, um, I think Portugal as a whole nation has been quite highlighted recently about their change in wild camping. And then more recently, um, Valencia, I think, in Spain has introduced a little bit of a similar thing. Yeah. And two things spring to mind about that one your idea i think is like the what should we say the best solution of all really isn't it mm. is that if you do find yourself a nice beach park up and you think i want to stay there the night yeah 
then don't. Hmm. <laughs> you know, you can still visit the places in, in the day. It is a ban on overnight sleeping in your vehicle, and yep. that's always been there in Portugal. But now they're choosing to enforce it properly with fines and things. And we have heard from lots of people that have been receiving fines. They are in the um, in the built-up areas, in like the Algarve, the yeah. really popular beaches. Tourist spots and that, yeah. But if you find a nice beach, you can still go to the beach. It just involves a little bit more planning because at the end of the day, I think the exclusion zones is 9pm till... 6 a.m. or something, yeah, or isn't it? Eight to late, some of them. Or eight to well, late, yeah. or something like that. So you get to the end of the day and you find somewhere that you you can park up, yeah, um, and go there for the evening. And there's lots and lots. We were we were absolutely shocked and stunned um, in Spain, at least, and a little bit in Portugal, at just how many authorized places there are in the yeah. middle of car parks. Yeah, like a municipal spot whereby you're paying the local council or whatever a couple of euros, sometimes even nothing. Sometimes nothing, and you yeah. can stay there for seven days, yeah. and you can keep going back for seven days. So you go out for the day, and then you go back and stay there, and you can do that for, for a whole week for free yeah. with facilities. Yeah. So rather than actually park on a beach and worry about water, uh, worry about you know where you're going to get um, somewhere to empty your toilet or something like that, then use the campsites or use the dedicated park-up spots where you've got those amenities, where you've got fresh water and somewhere to empty your grey and empty your loo, but still enjoy the nice beach, park up there all day. Yeah. You know, get your deck chairs out. On the beach, not outside your van, because yeah, that still that is might a, be this, an this issue. <laughs> really? Yeah. You count. know what I'm going to do with that? Oh, now, I don't do you? know. I'm seeing it coming already. <laughs> Shall do it already. <laughs> oh, got something else to work with now. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes, because they do still class that as camping, and we've had yes. we've seen people have the guard come up and say, you know, you can't do that. You have, you have to be away from your van yeah. with, your, with your tables and chairs. But Even during the day. So yeah. not at night time or anything like that. Just during the day, do not set up camp. Out, right outside your van. Yeah. Unless it is a campsite, obviously, or a municipal site or something yeah. like that. Yeah, a lot of the airs, the, the, the official airs, they still don't like you yeah. doing that. They'll say not to camp because it's supposed to be a quick in and out kind of thing. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's frustrating. And it is because we know that it's people that don't take care and 99.9% of all the people we know take care and yeah. even make things better than when they got there. Yeah. Um, and, and it's frustrating that there has to be this change. I don't think it's the end. It is just a change. It's something that yeah. might even change again when people figure out the fact that it it's not bringing tourism. The the amount of tourism and the, and the be, local yeah. villages are going to start being affected by the the p lack of people that are going and staying mm. there. And yeah, it's nice to crack open a beer at five o'clock and not worry about leaving Moving anywhere that, yeah. and then waking up on the beach. Yeah, that's all lovely, but it's still it's still not the end of travelling in these countries. You no. can still go to the beaches, but you just have to plan a bit more to find somewhere else to go um, and, and stay for the evening. We found, as long as you get... The language barrier is the thing. As soon as you find um, a pub or a bar that's close by that's got um, a decent-sized car park, we've gone in and asked. And yeah. they've said, of course, as long as you come in and, and have a drink. Yeah, it's just then... like pub stops in the UK, which is yeah. what we would say to a lot of people. If you struggle for finding somewhere in the UK, obviously... Even during lockdown, we were helped out last year. Yep. But um, yeah, pub stops just as easy. But it's just a language barrier. You just yeah. have to get around that. They really appreciate yes. you trying. At least yeah. we found. But one of the don't... things I'd say is I think that this has all been blocked, stopped, and curtailed because people are outstaying the welcome of the locals. They are coming as a big group and swamping a car park, leaving no space for the locals, and staying there for weeks on end. Mm. If people were a bit more thoughtful and didn't travel around in big groups or only stayed one night or two nights and then left again or something like that obviously as well as cleaning it making it look better than when you found it i think that none of this would happen myself yeah and i do think the big the big thing is the making sure this space for locals yeah because we've stayed in a few places where there's mm. already been a few vans but the place has been massive yeah so we've had no problem with parking up and staying there and parking up um, you know, we we normally find the corner and take ourselves well out of the way. Hmm. Um, and it's just things like that, really, isn't it? But we have also found, like we say, we found a nice corner when you arrive and it's like, oh, this has got loads of spaces and everything. And yet, like, as soon as it comes to a Friday night or a, or a Saturday, Saturday or Sunday, yeah. it's absolutely rammed. So you just wouldn't believe 
how many people might use that little spot that you think you've found that no one else has been ever been to mm. and you think oh this is a great spot and everything yeah and there's been families on yeah. the beach all day and yeah. then people fishing in the evening and it, it, it does turn out to be because they just i think they just like having the beaches right there yeah. don't they so they'll literally make a whole day of it and yeah. get a bit jealous really want to pull up a chair and go sit with them because <laughs> it looks amazing and they do leave the rubbish afterwards and we probably most of the time do go clean and, up and pick it up yeah. yeah but that's just the way it is and yeah that's just our thoughts on why we think those changes have happened and like I say just ideas on how you can on make the most of it because I know people are going oh there's no point in me doing this now because I can't go to Portugal and do all of this and it doesn't have to be more expensive it can be a bit more expensive yeah. it could be a lot more expensive if you chose to do campsites yeah. instead of everything there are ways of, of working it all out and yes it's not as idyllic or it won't be as idyllic as all of this yeah. being able to pitch up on a beach and stay there for weeks on end we noticed this time round um, at least four or five of the spots we stayed at just in the same year but just earlier in February last year mm. uh, were not available to us yeah, they'd I been height barriered or blockaded or whatever yeah our favourite so, favourite beach in the yeah. whole wide world was we couldn't get to it which Playa would, Granada wasn't it yeah, yeah so we were absolutely gutted but I mean That's hopefully they'll see a difference because I think those beach bars there are going to suffer yeah, a lot for not be. having all those vans there yeah. Um, but, but yeah. yeah don't worry about it like I say there's loads of other places. If you look at most of our videos, um, we started going to um, the middle of Spain in the mountains and the countryside and all that and found so many places, even by lakes, I suppose, but so many places that were very welcoming with overnight parking. Some would let you stay a week. Um, facilities, services, no fees. Don't stick to the beaches. Don't stick to the routes that everyone else is is going to stick to so you are not traveling or seem to be traveling in a big group and go and explore a bit more yeah yeah and there's it, just loads of it's just a different way of looking at it and a different way of doing it and now as you're doing it all it is just a case of be be thoughtful as you go in which mm. i know most people will be anyway but it's um i think it's more important now so we don't make matters worse yeah that, that it, it's done i mean we've got litter pickers we've always done um pick, picked up bits like that but yeah, it's a it's a whole group effort now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and just speaking about Europe, because I know you're probably going to ask in the comments section down below, what you're going to do about the 90 and 180? We're just going to do 90 and 180. Yeah. We're just going to go to whichever country we want to for as long as we can in Europe, mm. and then come out to whichever country we want to for 90 days to get out of Europe. That's and not then, in the Schengen zone, yeah. which we've just figured out, actually. Somebody told us that Croatia, although it's in the EU, is not part of the Schengen zone. Yeah, so it does leave... There are a lot of options there, and we'll plan around it. Um, but I think what we discovered last time is that after two months, I get a little bit bored of doing the same thing or being around the same country. So I might even, well, even though we did so many different did, things yeah, in Spain, it was unbelievable. Bored. But um, we do like coming back and seeing our family, yeah. of course. So I think... Mm, two months is the most for us which works yeah. out really well because it means that we can do two months and then we can come back and see some stuff and then we've got another month we can just go and potter around france yeah. for a bit or or things like that so um it works it's, works fine for us. it's a pain don't get me wrong and it was something that none of us were told about when we all were asked to vote but it is just something to deal with now so yeah it's there and until it changes make the most of it really absolutely and it's um it's still going to be good. We're yeah. still getting out there, isn't it? And we're not looking for land. We're not looking to be residents anywhere to change it or anything like that just now. We're just going to work around. Because right now we still haven't found somewhere we want to settle, really. So, Although we keep saying we're going to do France, don't we? It oh. might be one trip. One trip might be three months in France yeah. to find somewhere. And the but, funny thing is, is we <laughs> always used... We always use France as a transit company uh, country. Sorry, mm. We used to go there a lot when Jem was little. Um, but recently we literally use it to get to the other countries yeah. either side and, and we, we need adore to france so yeah. we are literally going to go and just have a massive tour of france we, everywhere we we très bien <laughs> that's about it bien sûr bien sûr yeah we oui. <laughs> oh and just to add to that um as far as wild camping or free camping mm. in england is concerned oh yes sorry chicken again look um <laughs> Love chickens. Um, <laughs> uh, Northumberland Council have um, uh, are in the midst of changing their car parks to be allowed uh, for overnight overnight camping to get yep. people up there and yep. get the tourists back in again. There may be a small overnight fee, like you put one or two pounds in, and it gives you from 
um, 6 p.m. till um, 8, 8 or, or 9 a.m. Like or something like that. Yeah. But then what you can do is go back to the meter, put another couple of quid in, and it might give you to lunchtime. Yep, and then you go out and see yeah. whatever you've parked near for the day. So, so I think that I'm hoping that it's going to be the anti-Portugal thing, that yeah. one, one council's going to try that. People others will see how follow. well it will work, and yeah. hopefully others will follow to make it easier in the UK. Rock up in a car park, and then you go to the little town or the village, and you spend a day there and that's their way of helping you stay somewhere overnight and helping the little shops the in little the village they'll get a couple more customs hopefully yeah and it doesn't have to be a lot of money either it just has to you know if there's a little bakery just go buy yourself a slice of cake yeah or a pasty you know, or little, little things pasty yeah we discovered as well that darren from down there down south says pasty he doesn't say pasty, pasty. He, says but he says pasty but he says castle yeah but but pasty pasty is pasty he says <laughs> <laughs> oh, the smack talk is rife yeah. on here at the minute. It's so lovely to have them close, isn't it? I know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on that bombshell, don't forget Friday night, 8 pm. Yes, we are going live, live with cheese. Yes. And, and I'm not getting wine, I'm getting beer. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah, we're going to be um, us, Baz, lots of cheese, lots of waffles. So, come along, ask us anything you want. Yes. And um, hopefully, see you there. Yes, absolutely. Take care, guys. See you later. See you soon. Bye. Bye.